big oh i see all right so that what about now all right all right we're here great welcome first of all uh this presentation right here it's gonna be uh interactive in a lot of ways i'm gonna talk to a lot of you and first things first can some of you turn your cameras on? This is super lonely. It's me and Mahesh, and I'm seeing 50 people. Like, this is, come on. Can, can I get some love here? Can anybody join me on camera? Because right now, I'm, just, I'm looking at this. Just, just, just nothing. Nobody is here. All right, is anyone joining us? All right, Mahesh, you're, you're also my favorite person now. All right, let's, I'll go with the few people who've asked to join me. Oh man, Hanuman, you're awesome. If you need a job recommendation, I will help you. Vishal Kumar, okay. Okay, this is good. You have an opportunity to network right now with someone who works at Microsoft and none of you are coming on camera. All right, Siraj, I will help you too. Cool. All right, let's, let's get started here. Everyone who's on camera, I will make sure to help you personally. Everyone else, well, sometimes I understand maybe you have crazy things in the background. All right, let's get started. So I have a simple question for you. Who gets paid the most? Three options here. At your job, it's tell me what to do and I'll do it. Tell me what to do and I will tell you how to do it. Or I'll tell you what to do and how to do it. So we have a chat button, right? You have a chat in Zoom. Mahesh, they use the chat button, right? Like that's something they use. All right, Mahesh, you're on mute. All right, so in the chat, I need you to put a number, one, two, or three. Who? And the question is, uh, who gets paid the most here? In these three scenarios, who gets paid the most? I'm going to wait till I get a few answers in there. So I see so far, no messages yet. Please write that in the chat. Any guys, Deepak, Deepti? It's number one, I Three. think. Yeah, you can ping in chat. You can chat your number. Mm, it's, so I think, it yeah, might be two. All right, you think it's person number two? Okay, good guess. All right, um, Amit, what do you think? I think it's one. You think it's one? Okay. And then what about Pavi? Pavi, what do you think? I know you're not on camera. All right, it, it's all right. We'll come back. So... The answer is, everybody had a good guess. The answer here is actually number three. Number I three you are sending is- sending message to me directly. Uh, try to message in a common box. <laughs> so, a lot of people- Wait, what? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, I didn't hear you. What happened? No, no. Uh, most of the people ping me as personally here in the chat. So, maybe you are not able to see, I guess, uh, CN. <laughs> oh, there, oh, no. Don't me message Mahesh privately, please. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Let me see this <laughs> yes. is- uh, Co-host, host to yeah. wait. Can everyone see this? Hold on. Let's let's. I'm putting this in the chat. Amit, can you see my message right now? No. No. All right, Mahesh. No. I think it's a no. settings thing in Zoom. Just like right now, I don't think I'm not allowed to message the whole group. Uh, just give me a second, then. All right. All right. Well, I'm sorry, everyone who sent messages. I'm not allowed to see them because your yeah, message. You're in a co-host now. Maybe you can see. Yeah, you can ping now. All right. Well, let me see everyone in meeting. Hey, everyone. Cool. Sam Pep, number two. Yeah, Sam yeah, Pep, thank yeah. Thank you for participating. You're awesome. All right. Can, let's go. We can so, see your message. All right. You can see it. Thank you. All right. Uh, I forgot one more rule. Uh, kind of like Vishal raised his hand. If you want to talk, please raise your hand so it's not crazy right now. Also, Vishal, since you spoke, you can put your hand down. All right, so Marikanan, hi to you too. So number three gets paid the most. Why? Because number three makes their boss think less. If I'm your boss, I don't want to think. I want to give you work and work is finished. Don't add, I don't want to have to think about what you need to do. I don't want to think about how you need to do it. I want you to tell me what to do. If you can tell me what to do and how to do it, then you will be getting paid the most money. Any questions? Cool. Let's keep going. So let's pretend I have an outdoor adventures company, okay? 
I have an outdoor adventures company and we offer things like hiking, bicycle riding, and yoga, and I don't know, swimming. So I need help because I need to organize this somehow. So like, I need an app to store my outdoor adventure activities, okay? I need an app to store my outdoor adventure activities. Who can please in the chat, write your plan of how to do this? I need to store outdoor adventure activity. How are we doing this? Uh, Mahesh, everyone on this call is trained in Power Platform, right? Actually, in the Microsoft products like uh, Power BI, Power Platform, Power Apps. So, multiple okay. Things. So, you're telling me all 50 of these people, if they were in a job interview right now and I asked them, hey, can you help me build this outdoor act? They would all be silent. Is that what's happening? <laughs> Remember, there's no wrong answer. So far, I'm seeing nothing in the chat. This is. I, I assume all of you have access to the chat, right? Yeah, you I, do. I, I kept a message, one of the messages in the chat. Uh, can we have a, a zoot? I think it's uh, good for the storage. All right. So Sorry, Vishal, say that again. Uh, we can have we can store in the Azure plat Azure for the storage. My okay, we can store in the Azure storage. Thank you, Vishal. Yeah. Excellent answer. Uh, anybody else have an answer? Please raise your hand. Really, Vishal is the only one I'm going to help after this call. Vishal, you're going to have a job, and you're going to be great at your job. Everyone else, I don't know yet. Or thank you're very shy. You yeah. Anybody else? Come on. No what? All right. So yeah, right here. Uh hold on. Let's just do it real quick. Um Abhigyan, can you tell me uh what would you do? You're on mute. Uh sorry, I didn't get your question actually. So I was waiting for your question. If you could please repeat the question. Uh uh yeah, my question is simple. Uh if I have an outdoor adventures company. And I want okay. to store the outdoor activities somewhere. How do I do that? List of activities you want to store. So we could possibly have a uh, centralized data, like centralized data source kind of thing, like uh, SharePoint or SQL, something else. Terrific. SharePoint and SQL, that totally works. Uh, let me ask one more person, Pavi. Or actually, I already called up. Uh, Thanvir. No? Uh, all right, let me pick uh, Pavan. All right, so here in this case, a lot of people, when I talk to different makers and I tell them to help my outdoor ventures company, the first thing they do is give me answers. Vishal, you gave me a great answer. As you said, we could store it in Azure. Uh, who, who was the other one? Uh, Razan, you said, okay, maybe we could store it in SharePoint. All of you are very... Mari Kanan, Dataverse Storage. Thank you for participating. Yes, Dataverse is another great one. All of you gave me excellent ideas. None of you asked me a very simple question. Why am I doing this? Why are we building the app? That is something that's so hard for makers to remember. Remember here, I just asked you this simple question of, tell me what to do, I'll tell you what to do. You can't tell me what to do if you don't understand why I'm doing something. So if you don't start thinking more, why are they building the app? You will never make as much money as number three. Number one, tell me what to do and I'll do it. Okay, so you are good because I didn't tell you to use uh, Dataverse storage. Mari Kanan, you thought of using Dataverse storage. Very good job. So right now you're in number two, but none of you are in number three because none of you are telling me what I should be doing. And you don't know what I should be doing if you don't ask me why. For instance, maybe I already have an app that stores outdoor adventure activities. Or maybe if we build this app, this app will make me no money. This is why it's such an important question to start with, why are you doing it? All right, next piece. Uh, we're gonna skip this activity because I think uh, everyone is having a hard time in the chat. So. Give me a thumbs up if you want to work for a European or an American company. Nobody wants to work for an, a European or an American. Mahesh, why am I here if nobody wants to work? Like, you're better qualified than that. All right. Can you show me what you're in a US company? A European company? How many are you? All right. All right. So, so let me see. Here. Who, who am I going to actually help? I'm going to help Vishal yeah, definitely. So I'm helping busy. Baskar. I'm helping Mari Kanan. And okay, so I guess I guess 
five of you want, you can learn from me. The rest of you, I, I don't know. But again, I understand some of you maybe have children in the background and you're busy. I understand that too. All right. So let me ask uh, someone who hasn't spoken yet. Uh, who can answer this question? Who can raise their hand and answer this question? Why would an American company hire somebody from India instead of America? Why would a Spanish company or a German company hire someone from India instead of Germany? Like, why, why would they do that? All right. Um, let me see here. Labor costs. Uh, uh, please Keep raise your cost. hand. Please raise your hand. Uh, I'm going to call on Sapna, and then I'm going to call on Abhigan, and then uh, whoever just spoke. All right, uh, Sapna. Due to the expense, they can manage their expense by hiring outsource uh, from India and other companies. So that can uh, the project uh, amount, like expenses, uh, will be divided uh, in a in a way that uh, they can give a balanced amount to the person. Like uh, like a person can get uh, the with their uh, like uh, home country, they will get a good amount. But as per the expenses in the US, they are giving to a person who are in US uh, will get a uh, less amount. So they are managing their expenses basically by hiring uh, uh, people from the India. Got it. Sapna, that was an amazing answer. You should talk more. All right. Uh, next person, Abhigayan, what do you think? Yes, sir. from India, uh, those are the persons are there. They are uh, more talented because they are uh, adjusting in managing all the things everywhere in each country. And uh, they know that how to manage the situations in every uh, critical uh, things will be there, what the happenings in there. And uh, whatever the uh, scenario I means day by day, what the technology means goes uh, increasing day by day. According to that, our people, uh, there's more talent to uh, means adjust into that atmosphere, into, into that environment. So I, I feel that it's the best options to means uh, hire our people uh, from other country. Got it. So Abhigayan, uh, your English is amazing and you speak too fast. I didn't fully understand. I think the main point you were saying is that um, there's a lot of talent in India. You have a lot of expertise. And because of that expertise, you can bring um, a lot of skills to these companies. That's what yes, I understood. Sir. Is that what you Correct. said? Correct, sir. Okay, Correct, okay. Sir. Please say it slower. Um, and then, uh, yes, it's me, Marikanan. Can I answer? Uh, Marikanan, you're after Piyush. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Hey, hi. So I simply believe if you have some exceptional skill that other people don't have in their country, so they, you will get that privilege to work with either a US or a European country. Because mostly in such scenarios where if you don't have some exceptional cases, they are not going to provide you that visa or something until and unless you can prove why they want you to come and work at their place. Oh, great answer. So you're actually starting a different conversation of should a company hire you directly or should they work with your boss? So that is fascinating. We'll come back to that. Mari Kanan. Yes, and actually the international or uh, whether it's a European or uh, American company, the people, those who are staying in that place are uh, uh, their management. If any issues or problem coming, it's a technically whatever that. From if a different country or different nationality people may think or approach the problem different way. They have some kind of issues. Uh, maybe skill set everyone knows Azure, Power BI, Power Platform, developing everything. But the uh, thinking ability or rational thinking or critically thinking to solve the issues. Maybe if you have different uh, uh, culture or racial background means, the people have uh, exposed uh, different kind of uh, problems. So they can give simple and uh, easy explanation to them. And uh, another thing for a company or um, uh, like from Europe or whatever the country, if they are uh, inclus uh, including every international person, such as uh, India or whatever Asian country, they are talking uh, people from there. And they can, in the international market, if they are going, they can shout out, uh, they have uh, inclusive of people from all over the world and uh, they are uh, delivering, they are reaching out the uh, millions of uh, people uh, directly by uh, their product or kind of things, like that things. It's a uh, perception and uh, uh, like uh, reaching, it's they, they are uh, brand building also back on, it's uh, happening. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I heard a lot of stuff there. I'm turning off my, uh, my screen just so I can talk about that. Mark, I an excellent point, which is, um, 
if they're a global company working with a lot of different countries, it might be nice to get a different perspective, such as someone from India. Also, obviously, India I think... IT. So, yes, very good. And then I'm going to do one more because I do want to continue. Um, Amit. And don't worry, Samsung SMS908E. I think that's your real name. Is your first name Samsung or and your last name SE? I will, we will talk to you soon. Uh, Amit. You're on mute, my friend. I'm sorry. No, Amit is not audible. No. Ah, uh, yeah, Amit, we can't hear you. All right, we'll come back to you. I'm sorry. Um, Samsung SM. Uh, what what do you have? Okay, I'll I'll give two three assumptions. So uh, maybe they want to launch in that country, uh, and then they are hiring people from there and getting more, uh, you know, ideas what's happening. Uh, second is maybe they want if they are developed country and hiring from developing country, so maybe they want to pay less and manage their finances. Uh, and I forgot yeah. the third one. <laughs> No, no, no. That's a terrific answer. Is maybe they're trying to work in India, have more connections. So, of course, hire people who represent the country. Amazing yeah, diversity. Answer. Yeah, maybe they want to um, have diversity. So that's one thing. Yeah, these three. Exactly. It's like diversity. I'm bringing diversity to this call because I'm from a different country. Actually, are all of you from India or no? I'm yes, in yes. Singapore. Okay. Yes. Oh, you're from Singapore. Yes. Cool, very cool. Um. All right, so I'm going to ask you a more uncomfortable question. Why would an American or a European uh, country not hire from India? Why would they not do it? Now, this answer, because I, I don't think we have time, quickly write in the chat, why would an American or a European country hire from their own country? Why would they not out? Because you gave me great reasons. If we hire from India, the first person said it's cheaper. There's more talent. There's more diversity. Okay, that's a lot of good reasons to hire from India. Why isn't every company hiring from India? Uh, political issue for sure, visas. Um, a lot of times though, now it's it's uh, you don't have to hire that specific person. You can just hire their company. Um, like I hire people from India. Uh, H1B, all right, that's it, cool. So. I'm going to be honest with you. I've worked and managed teams in India, and some of the developers have been absolutely amazing. I have almost met very, very few people from India, developers, who understand this point here. Let me go back to sharing. And this point right here. I'll tell you what to do and how to do it. That simple question, when I gave you this challenge and none of you asked me why, that's the problem. If you want an American or European country to hire you, you need to be, you can be technical, like because you have special technical skills and because you're cheaper, they will hire you. But think about that. Do you really want people to hire you because you're cheap? Like that doesn't feel good. You want them to hire you because you have specific technical skills. So because all of you are in Mahesh, uh, Mahesh's program, you have amazing technical skills, but that only puts you at number two. Vishal and uh, others, you mentioned you want visas. If you want visas, you need to be more than just technical skills. You need to be more than, uh, I'll tell me what to do and I'll do it. You need to just do simple things of, you need to be able to guide the company, to help them, to tell them what they should be doing. And in order to do that, you need to start asking simple questions like, why are we even building this? If you're in a job interview and they give you a problem, and then you say to them, why are we doing this? What's the goal? They're already going to be impressed. I don't know if you understood what I just said. If you are in a job interview and you just ask, why are we building this? You're going to already be seen as so different. I have interviewed, I don't know how many people, nine people for a job in the last two months. None of them asked me why. It's not just India. Americans, Europeans, they like forget this simple question. But again, if you want the most money, starts there. All right, let's get into our actual presentation. So today we're going to talk about how to think of it like an architect instead of just being a task taker. So right here, let me, how do I, I think I'm blocking it. So let me, I'm used to using Zoom or sorry, Teams. So this is harder for me. All right, let's share there. Cool. So there's always, there's like approach one. And then there's approach two here. So let's make this bigger. 
I see this happening all the time, where the um, a lot of developers, they think it's this. If I'm trying to get the flag, they're like, oh, there is a way that seems hard but is better, or they take the easy way, and then the easy way becomes harder later. This is how kind of makers think. This is, again, uh, number one and number two. But number three thinks this way. Instead of thinking there's only two ways to do it and we need to, to get this flag, they think, is there a different flag we can get that's a little better? So that's the key thing right here is as solutions architects is, are we even chasing the right thing? Let's start to look at a couple of examples. All right, so we're gonna look at three principles of good architecture. We're gonna look at performance, save the customer's time and your time. We're gonna look at reusability. Can someone tell me what reusability means? Anyone want to raise their hand and tell me what reusability means? Oh, well, somebody wrote something in the chat. Uh, giving opportunity to look out. Oh, got it. That's from earlier. Okay. So reusability is making it so we'll come back to it. It basically means the code you write, you can use it again. It lets you build fast or work less. And then the last thing is we're going to talk about over architecting. Now, if you notice here, when I said performance reusability and over architecting, every time I'm talking about how it helps the customer, the customer loves you, you build it faster for them, and you save the customer's time. Do you see right here how I'm talking about the benefit it brings to the customer? I'm not just saying words like performance reusability, it's best practice, that's good architecture. Nobody cares about good architecture. What they care about is can you save them time and build things faster? All right. Also, the key thing here is your company, I don't really care too much about your company. I care about you. Amit, I care about you. I care about you, Vishal. I care about you, Sapna, because I'm also, I don't own a company. Well, I own a training company. But my main thing is I'm like you where I've been a maker and I've been an architect. So the techniques I'm showing you here, if you can do this, it's not just about good architecture. It's about you personally working less because I think we all work too hard. All right, let's jump into an actual example here. So um, reusability. In order to understand this, we're gonna, I'm going to show you this quick little app here. So uh, what's this? This is just a simple model-driven app I have. And right now, remember when I was talking about those outdoor activities? Well, here they are. Right now, in here, I have uh, hiking, scuba diving, swimming. Is my screen big enough, by the way? Like you all can see it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, terrific. Yes. Thank you, Raz Rizwan. So, uh, and then here I have my instructors. And you will notice that these instructors, if I open one up, they have certain certificates or awards. They have an award for animal safety and truck driving. I know that Ahmed can do these things. And then right here, uh, does Benicia have any? Yeah, they have this award for truck driving. Very cool. All right, let's go back to here. So I want to build, have you, you've worked with Power Automate, right? Yes, I have worked okay. on Power Automate. And okay, cool. Got it. Um, Amit, do you have a question or your hand is still up? I don't know if you have a question. No, no. That was previously uh, raised. I want to discuss about uh, why the people having uh, uh, maximum business in uh, Europe, here in India, from Europe and America. That was the reaction has been uh, reaction and has been overdone. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So awesome. Yes. So in that case, um, sorry, this always takes me forever. Uh, let me just do just the screening. Cool. So here we are. We have a flow right here that says when a um, new award is added, when instructor award is added, okay? So when we give somebody an award, we're going to do some stuff and we're going to send them a text message like, congratulations, Vishal, you know how to drive a truck, okay? Whatever award you got. And then over here, I'm going to have the have some code and the code does this. It checks the um, awards API and it makes sure that the award is valid. Because uh, Malathi, I don't wanna send you a text message saying you got an award for um, being a swimming instructor if we don't give that award anymore, okay? Any questions on this before I continue? No, we good? No. No. Thank you. 
Thank you. All right. But now we kind of want to do this twice. We want to have it where not just when we have the, here it is, when we, when we add an award to an instructor, that's one time when we want to run the flow, but also when we create an award. Like if I come in here and I want to make a new award for, I don't know, uh, let's say the award is for, uh, let's see, uh, what, what, cricket. You, you play cricket, right? That's a popular sport. All right. So if the certification is for teaching cricket, let's say it's that. Before, um, once we create the cricket record, we want to make sure that we check against the awards API and we check if cricket is still valid, if we still want to do it. All right. So here's all my code. Here's my question for you is, um, does anybody see any problems with this code? You can receive this question in a job interview. Does anybody see, right now this code runs perfectly. Can this code be any better? Anybody have any ideas? No? Uh, Vishal, you got any thoughts? Might be in the first row, there's a error. Might be having error in the send and SMS. It, it's... Okay, so the send SMS works great. Good guess. What about, uh, who else is here? Um, Hanuman, do you uh, do you see any issues with this code? No? All right. So I'll tell you the problem. It's right here. This code is repeating itself. Is repeating code a good thing? No. 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 Can somebody raise their hand and tell me why when you repeat code, it's bad. Can someone raise their hand? Uh, I see something in the chat. Um, Rizwan, yeah, please, please. Uh, it will take some time to uh, like uh, uh, repeat the process and uh, may affect the performance. Yeah, it, it, you, well, in this case, the performance is gonna be uh, the same because this is one flow, this is another flow. But that's a really good guess. Uh, it's something to watch out for. Any other reasons why repeating code is bad? Uh, Razan, the first thing you said was excellent, which is uh, you have to like fix it in two places. That's true. Anyone else? All right. So the main reason you don't want to repeat code is what Razan was talking about, which is you got to fix it in two different places. The other thing is if bugs appear, like if there's a bug in this authentication, I'm going to have to remember to fix it here and I'm gonna have to fix it here. Also in the future, if I wanna use this code, I can't. Because right now this code is too connected to all these other flows. All right, does anyone know the solution here? How can we fix it? No idea? We can, can we use variables and uh, store that process and then call that variable again in this? That's a good guess. Uh, potentially we could use variables. There's something that's a little easier here. Anybody else? Thank you, Rizwan, for uh, participating. Anyone else? No guesses? Can you go center on yeah, the Yeah, Bhaskar. Yeah. Center, so we can verify in one place and uh, changes will happen in every place. So one, only one center location to save the code. If I, we can I, reuse that. Yeah, the I, I think I understood what you were, yeah. So yeah, we can reuse it. I, I Tell me if this is or isn't what you were um, saying here. So the what you would do here is instead of having all your code repeating itself in these two areas, you'd make a child flow. So you'd make a child flow, a third flow, and in here you would have all that logic from earlier, all these two things, they're just right here. And then you have these two flows um, call this flow. Does that make sense? So uh, I forget who said it. I think I, I forget it was one if it was you, but similar to environment variables, you're just going to make a separate flow. And then these can both be used here. So now in this case, you don't have to worry about like fixing your code in two different areas. All right. So that's one simple thing. Also, if you do this, this isn't just better for your company. It actually is going to save you a lot of time as well. All right, next to the piece. Um, this uh, concept of reusing code also happens in a Canvas apps here. I have a Canvas app here, right. 
So right here, if we zoom in, in this Canvas app, this is what I do to um, to help people, to help the company wants to evaluate. Uh, it's for resumes and job interviews. They want to give feedback to people. So let's pretend, um, let's do Siraj. So Carlos, well, Carl, we're going to pretend Carlos's name is Siraj. So Siraj arrived on time and he's very smart, but doesn't turn on his camera. All right. So I would put this here. And then I would add a plus and then like, great, it saved the record, cool. But I have another part of this app right here, which is if we go to screen two, um, when people get awards here, like right now, Saiju, let's say she got the award for truck driving. I need to confirm if uh, she really deserves the award, maybe I have to do some more jobs. If I think Saiju does deserve the truck driving award, I give a thumbs up. It goes in this queue and then I could press this button and then she's gonna go get her SMS message. But here, if you notice, I have this I right here. And this I basically means, hey, I need to be careful about this award. So this I means I need to be careful. So if I add this award here, do you see also the I is still there? I really want that code, okay? So right now, I means I need to be careful. These are the awards that these people need to receive officially. Make sense? Questions? All right, cool. So let's look at the code. Right here, the code for this is if we open this up, and let's get that in here, and then look at the tree view. There it is. Right now, we have this. Um, Where's the visibility right here? So I have this logic and this decides if we wanna show this I right here. This is the logic. Don't worry about what this code means. The point is we have code here. And so a lot of makers, I see them do this all the time. They're like, oh, I have this code here. Well, I need the same thing here. Cause right now on this, where is it? Um, right now on this icon, if I go here and I go to visible, uh, not that one, uh, let me see here. Uh, they would take this code that was here and then they would take all of this and they'd be like, okay, so I just need to recopy and paste this code right here. But as you can tell here, if I do this, I'm repeating code. That's the issue with this. You don't want to repeat code, so instead, Kind of like we had our formula, all of this is reusing the same code. We can do the same concept in Canvas apps here, but all you have to do is come up here under apps and then go under formulas. And then I put my formula here and now everything in my app can reuse it. So hopping back into here and then I go to this good one on visible, what I have is this. There's no code here. I'm just calling this formula. And then in here, I can copy this and do the same thing. And yeah, right there, same concept. So that's the benefit of when you do um, trying to think about your code where you're not copying it. So if you see the same code in two different areas, that's automatically a huge problem. All right, let's go. Uh, yeah, any questions? Yeah, Razan, were you about to say something? Oh, well, I'm good. No, cool. Let's keep going. So we got through that. We got through Canvas app name formulas. All right. Another thing you can do is you can think about how do I make code that I can reuse not just in the same project, because in this Canvas app, this code only exists here. But how can I take code and use it across all my projects for all my different companies? Let me show you a common one I use. So if we hop back in here, I don't think I'm storing it here. I have this uh, very common error handler flow, and I think I was actually smart enough to put it in the presentation here. Let me show you that. Oh, here it is, perfect, error handler flow. So this flow right here, I use in every single one of my projects. You will see here that it has a few different inputs. Let me see them. What it does is it accepts like, what's the name of my flow? Who should I notify? Basically, if any of my flows crash or have problems, I'm gonna call this flow. 
So this flow is uh, receives uh, the person I need to tell, like if uh, Sampath works on my team, it's going to notify him, hey, this flow has failed. And then it's going to send them a, uh, a Teams message right here. So your flows, when they fail, someone gets notified. And then what the a flow that's actually calling it, that looks like this. Right now in this flow, I'm not. And the flow I showed you earlier, I wasn't using it, but it's right here. And then I apologize, I don't have this that we have to wait. So in here, what you're going to see is this is a flow that whenever a new instructor comes into the system, I need to do some logic. But right here, I have my error handler flow, and it is calling this flow that I have here. So anytime any of my flows fail, we're going to notify the developer. All right, cool. So now let's actually go into an, a question here. So right here, this concept of me being able to use my flow in a lot of different places is this idea of thinking bigger. For instance, you can use it with flows, custom connectors, JavaScript. All of these areas are usually cues or hints to you that, hey, instead of writing a flow one time or JavaScript that's only used in one place, can I build it in a way that I can use it in multiple different parts of my project? That's the concept of reusability. For instance, I already showed you um, named formulas here. Uh, you can do it with Azure functions. But let's start with a little bit of over-architecting here. So here, right here, I have this. Uh, does anyone know what a custom connector is? OK, cool. So remember our issue from earlier where we had our awards um, API be called here? So in this case, we built a child flow like this. But should we put this in a custom connector? If the API connection is not there, like uh, the connector is not available, then we need to go for custom connectors. OK, so if it's not there, we can move it in the All right, uh, anybody else have any ideas? Should we put this in a custom connector? All right, so here, if you haven't worked with custom connectors before, they look like this. Uh, let me pull one up. If I go over here in the left, and then let's back out here. What a custom connector, here it is. This is a custom connector. It pretty much makes it so when you call APIs in Power Automate, it makes it a lot simpler. All you have to do is come in here and build this out, this custom connector for you. And then um, it's going to give you a lot of different options for what you can do. And then, yeah, here you go. You define here. So in here, my flow right here, it does this where it uh, award validity. So I could say here, uh, check if award is valid. I could do something like that. But then if we hop back into here, when I actually call this flow, it looks like that. So I don't have to use two steps here. I could just do one of get award. So all of this code lives in here. Now, um, do you want to do this? Again, if we go back to our point of like, tell me what to do and I'll do it and that makes less money right here, this is kind of the principle we were talking about of over architecting. Is this necessary? I know I just talked about the importance of reusing reusing all your code, but you don't want to go crazy with it. Right here, if you're building a custom connector, if these are the only flows that use it, like you're not going to use it on a diff for a different company or something, then customer connector is too much. It's over-architecting. You're building more code than you need. So in this case, no, you don't want a custom connector. One flow is good enough as it is. All right. Let's keep going with this concept of um, over-architecting. So right here, I have this Canvas app that I showed you. And it looks better right here. And right here, this is the one where what we do is we look at these different instructors and we, um, we give them feedback right here. This is our Canvas app. But then over here, if we open up SharePoint, this, all of this, when I leave these records, like where was it? Um, Siraj arrived on time. He's very, very smart. All of this goes into SharePoint right here. Uh, not this particular place, but um, let me see here. I think it's here. 
anyways, the point is it's a SharePoint list. Let me open it up, right? Ah, here it is, Trek or Treat. As you can see here, this is, oh, it's onboarding. All right, this is the one. So right here, I have all of my instructors. So this connects to this. Right now, this developer built a Canvas app. Why did they build a Canvas app? Because they were told to build a Canvas app. Here's a big question. Instead of doing all of this right here, why can't you just build it in SharePoint? Can someone answer that question for me? Why do I need this if I can just do everything in SharePoint? Does anybody have any, um, any thoughts? So like, look, I have the same app here as this. Why did they build this? Anybody have any, any thoughts? No? The, does the question make sense? Mahesh, does my question make sense? Yes. Okay. Oh, not, no, not Vishal. I was asking Mahesh. Yes, yes. <laughs> awesome. So here, yeah, in this case, the um, there is no reason to do this. I see so many makers build unnecessary Canvas apps because their boss told them to do it. When, if this right here is already using, okay, look, Suresh arrived on time right there. This Canvas app is talking to this list. What's the point of this Canvas app? Just do it in SharePoint. Like, less apps, less problems. Here's another one right here. I have a table. Um, let me open up my actual app here. So if we go back into our apps, and then I open the one I showed you earlier, you will see that in here, when an instructor gets an award, we want to do something special. We want to take a photo of it. We want to take a photo that they got the award. So right here, if I open up, uh, is it this one right here? I have right here this other Canvas app where, well, it's not letting me do it, but it lets me take, oh, here, here it is. It starts. There we go. You guys see that? Hey. So right here, it can take photos, and then we get a photo of the award. This is what one maker built, is they built this extra Canvas app. So again, that principle of over-architecting, doing too much work, I think this app right here is kind of a waste of time. You could do the same thing by just uploading a file. Like, what's the point of building all this? Now, some people think like, oh, when someone's using this, they want to use the camera function. Here's the thing. Your phone has a camera function. Your computer has a camera function. You don't need to be building all this unnecessary stuff. So that's an easy one where you need to start thinking about, again, don't just follow your boss's instructions. Are there simpler ways to do what they're asking you to do? All right, onwards. So going back to our actual presentation, do you guys see the problem I'm having here? Oh, there it is. It, it's hiding over here. Cool. We're good. Just kidding. All right. So yeah, that's basically the issue of um, right there. Let me, let's talk about one more issue. Uh, Mahesh, have they worked with model-driven apps? Mahesh, have the students worked with model-driven apps? All right. We've, uh, we've lost Mahesh. All right. Uh, have, can anybody tell me if you worked with model-driven apps before? No one, you guys can hear me. No, right? sir. No, sir. I can't start. do the round. No, I app. think. It's a new no, I think. Got it. Abhiyan and Mamata. So you haven't worked with Amar. All right. Then I will kind of help you in this problem right here. So in this run right here, what you're going to notice that is, um, wait, raise your hand if you've worked with uh, Canvas apps before. Have you worked with Canvas apps? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right, so here, here's a, a quick question for you. What costs more money for a company, Canvas apps or model-driven apps? What's more expensive? Driven. Yeah. More driven app. Why is a model-driven app more expensive? Because it uh, doesn't support external data sources, uh, only supports database. Yeah, exactly. Because a model, thank you, Rizwan, exactly. It supports external data sources. Model-driven apps and Dataverse, they all use premium licensing. Premium licensing is more expensive than Canvas apps. Here's a little question for you. Which company is more likely to pay you more money? A company that needs you to work on something for Canvas apps or a company that needs you to do something in model-driven apps? 
Which company is going to pay you more money? What do you think? Maybe 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 model driven apps. Rizwan, okay, you think the company that's using model driven apps is going to pay you more money than a company that's using Canvas apps? Why do you think that? Yes, see, because when they are using data works, they might have a, a large a large amount of data getting in, and their business may be uh, huge. And uh, when the business is huge, obviously they will pay the uh, developers and the, uh, the other ones at more. So that's the reason. I think. Exactly, because they're using Dataverse and they are obviously paying more for that data. It's as simple as this. If a company has the money for premium licensing and to use Dataverse, that means they probably have more money to pay you. If a company is being very cheap and just using Canvas apps and SharePoint, they probably don't have that much money. It's why I've built my career around Dataverse and Dynamics 365. I use Canvas apps but not as much because I know that the work in Canvas apps, a lot of times is companies that want to try to save money. And if they're trying to save money, they're probably going to pay me less. So that's why I'm usually going with Dataverse or Dynamics 365. Um, I know some people who work in Canvas apps and make a lot of money. However, most of the time, if a company is using Dataverse or premium licensing, that usually means they have more money. All right, so I'm going to skip this activity since a lot of you already know um, Dataverse, since a lot of you haven't seen model-driven apps, so let's keep going. Uh, the last thing I want to show is this. Let's say in my Canvas app, right here, we get certain emails. And I need to check if this email is fake. So in my Canvas app, a user types in this email, okay? Um, would I, how would I check if it's fake? Does anybody have any ideas? How would I do this? Validating the fields. Okay, you validate the fields. Okay, good idea, Rizwan. Does anybody have any other ideas? Thank you, Rizwan, for talking so much. Please connect with me on LinkedIn afterwards. Uh, anybody else have any other ideas? What about uh, Hi Krishna? Do you have any ideas? No? Uh, Varun, do you have any ideas? Nope. All right. So Rizwan, thank you for your idea. Yes, you can definitely do that. But here's the problem is you can try to do some validation. But what I see a lot of people doing is they try to build this in Canvas apps. They try to build it with, with validation logic, like you said. They also try to build it with, uh, what's it called? Uh, Power Automate. And it turns out there are sometimes features that do something for you like this. There's actually a data validation field available in model-driven apps. So in this case, we're using a Canvas app, but it's the same idea as in model-driven apps. Before you build something, try to see if the feature already exists. I've seen so many Power Automate flows and Canvas apps and what have you, where the person simply didn't realize that that same feature already existed inside of Canvas apps or inside of Dataverse. They didn't need to build it. So here's an easy one. Uh, that you could have just used instead of having to go build this all yourself with validation. Good guess, Rizwan. Um, the point here is go check if the feature exists before you actually start to build it. All right. So this is the general concept of the more code you write, the more problems you have. That is why I was telling you, try not to use Canvas apps. Try not to use custom connectors. Make sure it exists before you build it. There is a place for custom connectors. There is a place for Canvas apps, but I only use those if I really need to. All right, uh, Mahesh, we only have two more minutes. Should we do question and answer? Yes, yes. In fact, we have questions. Right. So guys, in the session, who attended so far? Like uh, any any questions you guys have? So how it related to Power BI? Everything I talked about. Yeah. yeah let me get you an example here. Uh, I have Power BI up here. All right, the Power BI is going to take me a little longer here. Uh, let me pull it up on Power BI Desktop. Uh, I'm going to come back to your question as this loads. Does anybody have a different question while uh, my Power BI gets started? So when I have joined the company, uh, some of my managers ask, so is there a way to bypass uh, the premium capacity features and uh, uh, publish the report? 
uh, any alternative house speaker queue. So in this, so it's a very good company. I work at Sony, so but uh, the my managers and the higher uh, senior leadership ask some alternatives where they could reduce the license cost. So what what, what do you suggest in that if you have if you face that kind of scenario? Yeah. So in that case, Rizwani, I get that question all the time of like if you are having um what's it called the 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 company is being cheap. They don't want to pay for premium licensing. They think it's too expensive, right? Yeah, they try to see alternatives. What alternatives uh, to reduce the license cost? Or something. Yeah. Right. So in that case, there's a few things you can do. Um, let me actually. I actually have a presentation for that too. So let me pull that up right here. All right. Let me. Yeah, that's so funny that you asked that about licensing. So, so when people think um, pricing, what they think is that it's uh, premium licensing is twenty dollars per user, and it's and it's super expensive. When it's not really that. So I'll share this one second um, here, and here we go. All right, Rizwan, this one's for you. When it comes to premium licensing, you actually have three different styles. This per user license is twenty dollars a month. This is the one everyone thinks is too expensive. The per app license is a lot cheaper. It's $5 a month. So for instance, here, the per app user, $20 a month, super expensive. But then the per app license is only $5 a month. So in here, what we can do is if you have a QA and then you have this uh, executive here, if you have these apps here, what you do is instead of giving them both $20 licenses, you give them $5 licenses. So in here, if I have these licenses, this QA, this executive only has one license, you're paying $5. And then him, you're paying only for, what's it called? The two licenses, because he's using two different apps. Does, does that make sense? You're only paying for the app. So in the end, you're actually paying $15 a month. You're not paying $40 a month. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. Uh, okay. And we're not done here. If you start doing Azure Pay as you go, hold on, let's get past this. This is for a different thing. If you start using Azure Pay as you go, it's $10 a month for a user. But if the user doesn't use the app, it's free. Watch this. So I have all these. You Let me go to the next one. I have two active users, three active users, four. So that's $90 the first month. But the next month, nobody uses the app. That means I pay zero money. So Rizwan, it doesn't have to be like, I don't know, what is it? Four, three, two, how many? Nine people, nine times 20, nine times two, uh, 18. It's not gonna be like $180 a month or something. Like it can be potentially $0 a month. So Rizwan, part of the conversation you need to have is about licensing in general. Is it as expensive as they think? And if it is that expensive, you can. what you can do is also show them how if you try to build this kind of, here it is, this kind of enterprise application inside of a Canvas app, it's going to be disaster. It's going to have a lot of bugs. It will not give them as many features. And in the end, it's actually going to be more expensive to do this than to do this. And Rizwan, you're probably thinking, oh, but you need to show them what this can do. Here's the thing. Dataverse for Teams is free. You can build a proof of concept in their environment with Dataverse for Teams. It gives you two gigabytes and it's free. So you can just use that to show them a proof of concept and show them what's possible. Uh, thanks, Chuck. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, we had a Power BI question. Let me open my Power BI real fast here. Uh, I had it for a second. Um, while I'm pulling up Power BI, do we have any more uh, questions? Uh, yes, uh, I have a question. Yeah. So uh, what are the limitations of uh, Power Apps in terms of building an uh, application uh, in comparison with uh, the current technologies or tools uh, that uses code? Can we uh, build a complex application uh, using Power Apps? When you say complex, what do you mean? Uh, uh, heavy application that uh, has complex functionalities, multiple functionalities? Uh, 
Have you ever heard of a company called um, Coca-Cola? Yes. <laughs> they use Power Apps. Pepsi uses it. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, what are the um, that that gas that gasoline company? Um, oh my God, I forgot their name. Uh, it's not BG and G and E. Uh, <laughs> BP. Thank you. The gasoline they use it. So yes, absolutely. It's made for enterprise. Some of the largest companies in the world are using it. Okay. In fact, you can, if you tried to build the app I just showed you right here, um, if you try to build this app I just showed you right here, this whole thing with the instructors and outdoor activities, if you try to build that in custom code, it would take you like two years and it would never be as good as this. Like low code and power platform, if it's a fit for your company, it's amazing. It's perfect. However, you've asked a really good question. Sometimes it's not a fit. Uh, you, do you guys have Uber? Is Uber popular in India? That app? Do you know what I'm talking yes, about? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. If you try to build Uber and Power Platform, it's like impossible. So like that wouldn't work. In that case, no, Sharon, you can't use that. However, it's the concept of um, if it is a fit for the business, like if you're building a business application, I would say eight times out of 10, Power Platform's perfect. Um, all right, uh, any other questions? Uh, the one thing I will say about performance right here, uh, I forgot who asked me that. I think my mouth, it was you. You know how in Power BI, how you sometimes try to create a lot of different steps in order to like massage or fix the data? Sorry, I'm not getting you. Can you repeat it? Yeah, absolutely. So if I'm building a Power BI report, and where is it here? It's I, ah, here it is, thank you. Right here, I have my, um, if we actually explore the data, there we go. I have these tables here. And when I kind of built these data tables together, do you see here how I have measures and calculated fields? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Does anyone know the difference why I should use a measure or a calculated field? All right, so the reason is a calculated field is always gonna be calculating your data. So you're always gonna see it, which may sound cool, except that's gonna take a lot of performance power. Instead, if you use a measure like this, it's only gonna be cal like what? Calculated, I think you can see this, right? Uh, oh, I zoom in like this, I'm being dumb. Right here, I have this calc resume total score and measure resume total. They're exactly the same. The blue and orange is exactly the same. But because I'm using a measure here, this means that when this Power BI report loads, that is the only time it's calculating this. Versus a calculated field, it is constantly processing. It takes a lot more uh, computing power. So my point is, I use measures a lot more than I use calculated fields in my reporting because I know that measures are a lot better for performance. Uh, Mamatha, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And yes. I'm going to show you a different example in a second, but I want to see if anybody else has any other questions. Anyone else before I kind of continue here? Uh, are there any upcoming futures or functionalities uh, that are coming up? Uh, for Power Apps, uh, apart from the current set of tools? So the big thing that they're trying to do that you'll see is the most common is they're trying to put Copilot and everything. So a lot of the features that they're building, I haven't seen a lot that do something, like they give you a new feature. It's more like you can talk to Copilot and Copilot will build some of the pieces for you. Those are the most common things that like I've been seeing. Um, Anyone else? All right, uh, Martha, I got a special presentation right here for you. We're gonna do a quick two minutes in um, Power BI for Dataverse. Let's uh, let's start it here. All right, and um, cool, we're here. Great, uh, great. So Power BI for Dataverse. When you connect Power BI to Dataverse, the most common thing people do is they they try to go to the API, but 
That's not how Power BI connects to Dataverse. Does anybody here know how Power BI connects to Dataverse, what it uses? No? All right. It uses uh, something called TDS, which is called a tabular data stream. It's a special kind of connection, kind of like, um, I think, who was it? Sampa, I forget who, who was talking about SQL. It uses a SQL-like connection in order to connect to it. So if you were using Power BI right now, the first thing it would give you if you try to connect it to Dataverse is it uses this. However, this isn't always uh, super performant. This is cool for real-time data, but when you work on very large data sets, this is not going to work that well. For instance, if you have a lot of different tables that are all connected to each other, and you have just, uh, let me go back here. Come on. If you have a lot of these uh, different connected tables, or you just have a lot of data, then this right here is not going to work that well. Also, it has a limit of a five-minute timeout. So a lot of people who are using Power BI for Dataverse, they start here and use this, and they don't realize there's a lot of limitations. Instead, what you can use is something called Synapse Link. And what Synapse Link does is it pretty much puts all your Dataverse data, it puts it into Azure, and then inside of a data storage. So then your Power BI is going to connect to this instead of connecting to Dataverse. So you will have all your data um, in Azure. And then all of this is pretty easy to set up. In fact, I will show you real fast here. Um, if we come back here and we go into tables, these buttons right here, link to Azure Synapse, link to Microsoft Fabric, that's what they're doing. They pretty much take all your Dataverse data and then they put it into these other separate uh, files that it's gonna make it a lot easier for Power BI to read. Now, there's a lot of uh, more complexities here. Uh, Mamatha, I would love to share more about this, but um, I kind of already did my presentation. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna have a YouTube video coming out. If you follow me on LinkedIn, that's gonna explain that more if you wanna follow that. Sure, thank you so much. Oh yeah, no problem. Uh, oh, I had one more thing. I don't know how I didn't do this. Uh, I need to quickly advertise something. Uh, this is going to be great. So I have a, do I have it here? Um, all right, whatever. I'll show it here. I have a training program and it would be great if you're interested in signing up. So here it is here. It is kind of expensive. It is $400, but well, it's actually 450. But if you finish the program, you get $200 back. Also, if you message me personally on LinkedIn, I will give you a special discount because you're friends with uh, Mahesh. Because Mahesh is such a good guy, I'll give you a discount on it. Just message me personally on LinkedIn. So if you're interested in this, uh, pretty much the questions, Mamatha, you just asked about, um, where is it? Uh, data migrations or working with, um, where is it? Large amounts of data. All of that is we're going to be talking about here. And then who asked me earlier, uh, Sharab, about like licensing and stuff, all of that is its own unit right here. So pretty much all the skills you need to be a solutions architect is in this course. Um, this course is also a, it's a group. So we meet every week for like live sessions. They're actually really cool. And you also get, let me show you here. This is our online community here. And then we have people who are always like asking questions on it and stuff. And so all your very difficult architectural questions, like you can put them there. And so that way, a lot of people, like when they want to build things right for their company, a lot of them join this program. The next group starts in August. So if you're interested in that. Um, cool. So great. Thank you for listening to that. There, uh, Mahesh, I advertised something. So there's something for your students that they want to keep learning. There's any other questions? I hope uh, we don't have any session questions, right? Anyone have questions? Maybe we can connect very soon again, maybe in a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, let me know. Yeah. Um, well, it was great meeting all of you. Uh, I wish you good luck in your Power Platform journey.
I'll, I'll put my links in here if you haven't met me before and we can connect there. Even if you never join my program, totally fine. Uh, you can follow my YouTube channel. I post a lot of stuff there. And then let me see here. And yeah, would love to connect there. Here you yep. go. Cool. All right. Then uh, Mahesh, that's it, right? Yeah, that's Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.